Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And today we have one of the legends of online marketing, Jeremy Schumann, Shoemaker. And he went from selling washers and dryers at Sears to creating multi-million dollar companies. He was founder of NextPimp. Are you doing this live right now? Yeah, yeah. We're oh, good. fuck. I don't yeah. want to smoke on the thing. Can you start over? No. Why? This is real. This is real. Because <laughs> if my wife sees it, she'll be pissed. All right. <laughs> Actually, we can just roll with this. I don't give a fuck. She'll never see it. Um, I'm going to send it to her. But, um... Okay. <laughs> I don't... I mean, she... Whatever. She'll deal with it. Um, <laughs> She'll never see it anyway. <laughs> he went from... See, I don't do any edits like Andrew. So we, we talk about... Don't edit. It's yeah. So he's founder of auction ads. He also likes electronic cigarettes. He runs Shoe Money Media, which runs several businesses, one of which includes the current company, the PARS program. He's co-founded Elite Retreat, uh, which is an annual industry expert conference. And he's author of Nothing's Changed But My Change, The Shoe Money Story. Jeremy, thanks for joining me. Hey, Jeremy. Thanks for having me on. Since it's Inspired Insider, you know, my question is, what was one of the moments, you know, when you had that huge challenge? What were you thinking about? What inspires and motivates you to kind of push forward through that? My yeah, I definitely think um, recognizing where you're at. I mean, like having you got to have that moment of clarity. And I think the uh, gosh, I mean, like to to for me it just happens to where things build up to a point and then i recognize what's important in life and when you're losing money and your business sucks and stuff like that now we came back that year like shortly after this um within three months we got not only i was about 150k that year in the hole we came back to be 400k ahead um that was wow. that was toughest and the best you know um making that cha transition but um, you had to push through that, you know. Some people would yeah, have just—it's the dip, right? I mean, yeah. you know, Seth Godin's. Um, I, a lot of people follow Seth, and I love Seth, and I've talked to him about him when I did my book and other stuff. And um, he's a great guy. A lot of people like him and Tim Ferriss and these guys—they they like. I, I say I listen to everyone, but I don't follow anyone. I'll listen to him. I love hearing their experiences, but let's be honest: Seth Godin hasn't sold anything, and. 15, 20 years. And even when he did, he was working for a company. He wasn't the man making decisions. So, you know, for all these guys who, you know, take everything he says and run their business by it, I mean, he hasn't done it himself, you know. So he did that one site that went away, Squidoo or whatever. But, um, you know, and I don't mean to knock any of them. Like Guy Kawasaki would be the first one to tell you he's never invested in anything that has made money. But yet he's like one of the premier angel investors and people listen to his every word. But so he's on the cover of your book, too. I, and I like him. And he's, yeah. he's, I mean, he was one of the initial employees at Apple or, you know, whatever. And I, I, I talk with Guy. He's been to six of my events. Um, and he, but he'll be the first one to tell you, you know, that he's the, the role model for anyone who wants to do something and never work again in their life. I mean, he's like he's, – he was telling me the other day he's got a, a $2 million a year gig with the University of Singapore to give their commencement speech. That's all he has to do. Fly there, give their commencement speech. It's two million bucks. It's a good deal. Yeah, and he's got he's got to deal with Chevrolet. He's got to deal with these other companies where he like will go in once a month or be available to them if they need him. The guy, what's he ever done in many years? You know, I mean, I love and but you take a guy like are we like we're running probably way long, but um, if I could just talk for a minute about go well, ahead. let me answer your question. So the dip, the dip yeah. by Seth Godin. I I mean, the key takeaway is. To know, like, am I quitting this because it's hard work or am I quitting this because it's a it's going to bleed me dry and it's never going to work? And I just I just don't see the way it's going to work. And sometimes those can be really, really close because on the PAR program, when we were so much into development and I had all these employees and there wasn't revenue and I had focused from other forms of revenue to this, it was like, okay, am I – you know, am I just because I'm burnt out on this and this and this? And I was like, no, it's because I'm not a CEO, you know, and I'm not this and I'm not this and I'm paying all these people this. I'm going to – and you have to make a change. This is the thing. When No matter – and it, it doesn't matter if it's the right one or not. If you just continue on, then it's the definition of insanity, you know. And um, it's, you know, hoping for a different result, doing the same thing. And 
that's the difference is I always make a change and, and many times frequent changes. And my wife refers to it as my ability to pivot. I pivot fast, like on anything. Like I decided I was moving out of the office and three weeks later, and I'm talking about a 6,000 square foot office. And Is seven, that the one with the bat? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, seven individual offices, huge commons area, you know, art wall, art everywhere, all these desks, all these computers. Three weeks, that place was liquidated. I mean, I sold tons of shit. I moved tons of shit to my house. Three weeks, when I make a decision, I want it to happen tomorrow. Um, and I pivot very fast and I change very fast. And, you know, I'm, I'm usually, but, but that's the thing. If you don't, then you just slowly, the ship just keeps going down. If you, you know, when you see it, you got to make a change. And if that change is to quit it, then it's one thing if it's to, you know, stick with it, but either way, you've got to make a big change. So I've had several projects where I was asked deep in development. If somebody, I don't know if the site's up right now. There's a site, offerpools.com, and it looks like it's not up. I should. That's probably on a box. It was at a server at our office that's now in my, my other room. Um, so that was a, an amazing site. I invested probably 200 grand in that site. Never went through with it. Just, just got to the point where I was like, this is just not for me. And, and I, I don't regret that. Um, but anyway, I'd like to talk about John Chow for a second. Do you know who John Chow is? Yeah, he's a blogger. Yeah. Right. He's a blogger. A lot of people make fun of him and whatnot, um, um, but a lot of people follow him. But I think he, much more than, like, there's all these guys that people follow. If you follow his models and what he does, um, I actually learn a lot from him on a lot of things. And, and actually, like, was like, that son of a bitch, like, on some of these things. That guy doesn't have a technical bone in his body. Um, he started the blog writing about others that make money. And people started following him, you know, because he would be like, oh, I made 10 bucks last month off of, you know, this thing. I made this. And then people started paying attention to him. The guy literally, like, makes a decent, you know, six-figure a year profit, um, mid six figures. He has other people write his blog for him. He doesn't – he's got it figured out. And – I think if you were going to listen to someone, you should fly to wherever he's at. He speaks broken ass English, but when you talk to him and you hear about all this stuff, it's pretty it's it's just really eye-opening to see like gosh, I'm I'm envious. Um and of of the of I don't know, envy's a bad one, but jealous maybe is a better one. Of just, you know, just how he's he's figured it out and I'm killing myself making all these you know, having all these employees and all this stuff. And that guy, you know, is, is really profiting at this point, you know, more than I am. And I've got 50 times the visitors on my blog that he does. And I've got all this stuff, but he'll jump on. Like, I thought I was too good to promote an info product. Like I was like, Oh, that's a $2,000 product, blah, blah, blah. I'm too good for that. I don't need to promote that. And, and then he did it and he made like I don't know, a lot of money. So then I was like, all right, I'm going to see it. So I, I do uh, – he did John Reese's Traffic Secrets, 2006, something like that. So I did like – I started uh, – it was a little bit later, but I promoted like four info products and I did like 600 grand. Wow. I mean just, just in affiliate commissions and I was like, that son of a bitch. Like I, but I learned that from him. You know what I mean? Like everyone thinks I'm an expert on stuff. Yeah, I've got my things, but – I mean, people dismiss him a lot, and the thing is, he will sell out. I mean, like you can buy an ad on a site for five hundred bucks or a mailing for five hundred bucks, and he started doing that Moby thing, and that guy is killing that thing. I never promoted it. I thought it was I didn't like it, and I still don't like it. So no offense, dude, that it's your thing. It's just not for me. Um, right. It's like kind of MLM kind of thing. It's just I've never been comfortable with those, but I could have made a ton of money with that. But you know, but some of the things he does, I copy and will totally. I don't copy them. I outright steal them. You know, ideas, and he does the same thing with me. And sometimes he'll hit me up and say like, "Hey, what plugin do you use for this?" And I'm like, "I don't use a plugin. I use a script." And he's like, "Can I get it?" And I'm like, "Well, just give me your username and password to your your hostgator, and I'll I'll set it up for you." And you know, and and then and then he gets a little demanding because he'll be like, "Hey, can you make it this? I need it this color." <laughs> I'm like, all right, this is where she really stops and your developer comes in. So, but you know, I mean, he's a really cool guy. 
Um, I just, I just want to people out there, like if you really want to follow some people, like he's, he's a guy that's doing things really interesting. There's a guy named Charles Ngo, N-G-O, which probably knew something like that. Um, no, it's no is how it's pronounced. Um, he, his blog is excellent. He's and I'd love to, I only really listen to people like religiously that are actually doing shit because right. it's just, it's just so valuable. So Jeremy, I appreciate your time. No problem. This has been hugely valuable, and um, I will make sure to email this to your wife when we're done so she yeah. sees the intro. But uh, Yeah, especially she's going to love it. But it's always a pleasure, Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks Talk to you again. later. Bye-bye.